Hey guys, we Fanatic here. Today let's take a look at uh, the ESXi 6.5. So here the uh, I've got the ESXi 6.5 upgraded from 6.0 and uh, I'm just using the vSphere client, the normal vSphere client to log into the node right now. So the client I'm using is the client for 5.5 so you can actually log in to the 6.5 using the vSphere 5.5 client because uh, as we all know uh, the client update has actually uh, been stopped by VMF for quite some time now. So here I'm just logged in and you can see the build number which is there 6.5 4240471. Now at first glance nothing has changed all of the options that we are familiar with is um, there you get the familiar ESXi shell and the SSH options or the prompts which are there on top. The restart option, the commands, the host management, the fault tolerance values, everything is the same here. And the virtual machines, of course, we don't have any VMs. So moving on, the CPU, memory, storage, and the resource allocation is the same. Performance charts, again, nothing has changed. Looks the same again. And the configuration, again, at first glance, nothing has actually changed. So this is of course installed in the virtual machine. So we won't be getting the health status or any other details here. Under memory, you can see that it's only installed with four gigs of RAM, so that's fine. Storage, I've got the local storage installed. If I do an add storage again, I'll be getting an option of adding a, a disk or a LAN there. And the networking, I'm just using a standard switch, nothing fancy here. If I do an add networking again, so I have options of adding in either virtual, virtual machine port group or uh, the VM kernel. And the storage adapters again, I can see the default adapters which are there. As usual, if I do an add, I can add the iSCSI software adapter. And the network adapters, again, I have just a one NIC which I have. So advanced option again, pass through device configuration. This is a virtual machine, so of course it won't be there. Power settings are set to balance. Let me just go ahead and change that to high performance. Okay, just do a refresh. That should actually come up. There you go. License features, again, nothing has changed. Time configuration gives you options of uh, setting up the, um, your NTP. DNS and routing, um, that shows you the DNS info and the routing information there. So that shows you your VM kernel port, etc. Right now I'm using DHCP, so that's fine. Authentication services again, you have options of local authentication or domain controller. Virtual machines, startup, shutdown um, options again, nothing has changed. Swap file location, security profile. Security profile shows you which are services which are there, the firewall config uh, and the security profile. Host cache configuration, of course you can configure that. System resource reservation, I don't have any reservations. Agent VM settings, we'll get to that later when we actually uh, install some VMs and enable HA, etc. Advanced settings gives you the kernel options here. So moving on, under users, again, you have the familiar users which are here. These are the default users, I haven't really changed anything. Under events, you have the events for the system. And the permissions, again, you have uh, permissions you can set for individual users. So if I go on top and look at the uh, options on the vSphere client, virtual machine, resource pool, I have the export events again, hasn't changed. Again, uh, report options are there. And the edit, I have client settings. The view, I can choose the option that I need. And the inventory, I have the family option. Role and plugins, again, is the same. Under help, if I go, you can see the version of the client I have, as well as a uh, version of the uh, ESX host. So as you can see, there's nothing really fancy going on here. So the uh, vSphere client is pretty much normal, but what we want to check is is the HTML client, the vSphere client, the HTML version. So here what I'll be doing is I'll be typing in the IP address of the node. And of course, I'll be clicking on continue. So by default, it takes you to IP address slash UI. 
it's going to be taking a minute to load here. There you go. So here I'll be using the same username password uh, root as well as the uh, password for root here. Now people who are familiar with the web client, um, this should be a familiar look and feel for you. So we'll just wait until everything actually loads up fine. Okay, okay. So uh, by default you are in the host setting, so you can see the various options which are there. Now the right hand side pane gives you the list of options which are there on each window or each option that you choose. So there has been some changes in terms of uh, in terms of the default client that we use, the uh, the actual web client that we use. Let's start off from the top. On top, you have the options of auto refresh now, which you can set to the values which you want. Change password. You have send user statistics as well as visual effects and uh, other options. Language selection is there. The console you can choose. Application timeout you can choose again, and you have an option to reset everything to defaults. Now by default under monitor, if I go to host actually, let's start off from there. So if I log on to the host, if I click on the host on the left hand side, by default I'll be getting a summary page for the host itself. So this is a familiar inter uh, interface or a page for uh, people who are familiar with vSphere. So on top you have the CPU memory storage configuration. You have the licensing uh, information that comes up there. You also have uh, two little uh, menu items that come up with action tabs now. So if you click on the action, um, that takes you directly to the options uh, for either enabling or disabling SSH and ESXi shell. So click on the option. By default, it takes you to services, which is highlighted, and you can either enable or disable console access and SSH. So in this case, I need both of these to be um, enabled because I'll be logging in by using uh, PuTTY or the SSH client. But what I can do is I can actually go ahead and dismiss the options right there. Now, instead of this, what I can do is on the right hand side, I've got a small arrow or rather cross in this case. And uh, if I want, I can actually go ahead and disable, uh, dismiss the notifications from there as well. So by default, you have these tabs on the uh, arrows on the left, which uh, you can actually click, and that'll drop down and give you options you can choose. So it shows you the DNS entries, it shows you all the pertinent information about the host on the single page. Let's just scroll on top here. So uh, let me just dis uh, dismiss the licensing thing. So here you can see the image profile being used. VMotion, it'll tell you whether it's supported. Virtual Nick, which is, uh, which is, uh, I mean, which is configured for VMotion, etc. System information is right there. Below that, you have the performance summary. And uh, what is nice is you actually have hyperlinks here now. So if you click on the hyperlink, it takes you to, for example, here I've cho uh, chosen the VM network configuration. Once you click that, it takes you directly to the VM, uh, to the uh, VM network. Now the vSwitch topology loads up and then you have further hyperlinks uh, which you can actually use to configure um, the, the vSwitch itself. So here I've clicked on edit settings. That'll open up the, um, that'll open up the VM network configuration. So on one single page, I have options for nick teaming. I have options for traffic shaping, and I also have options for uh, that particular network interface itself. Here, let me click on cancel and click on that uh, hyperlink for the VM NIC. So this takes me to the VM NIC configuration, wherein if I do an edit settings, I can choose the options which are available for duplex and speed settings. Now, uh, the good thing is any any option that you click. Um, at least on the network segment, you'll see that um, on the left-hand side of the pane, that particular setting actually is added. So under networking, since I've clicked on the vSwitch and the VMNIC, etc., you can see that those are now added on the left-hand side of the page there. 
Now, by default, when I click on the V switch, I see that uh, I, I see this V switch properties here uh, listed all at once. I can see the V switch details. I can see the switch topology, etc. And uh, I also have options for clicking uh, as I go along for all the hyperlinks available, and that gives us more options. For example, here I've just clicked on the TCP/IP stack, uh, the default TCP/IP stack. And you can see that as I click through, I get various other options. If I click on the VMK, they'll give me the options for the VMK interface, which is there. There you go. So if I click on the default TCP stack again, you'll see that I'll go back to the default view. Now here I'm just clicking on the host. Let's just see what are various options which are available and what is different in this uh, particular client as opposed to the normal, the fat client. So first, first and foremost, the look and feel of it is refreshing. You have an option here which says get vCenter server. So if you click on that, once the vCenter server is available for download, you can go ahead and download it. Right now, uh, it's not yet released. So, uh, so that's why it's not taking us anywhere. Now create register VM, of course, will give you an option of creating a VM. And the familiar uh, three options actually come up here. Let me just uh, click on cancel here. I'll come back to that later. Reboot gives you an option of rebooting the host. So it tells you that the host is not in maintenance mode, etc. I don't want to reboot right now. Just click on cancel. If I click on actions, so uh, this now gives you various other options which are available for each interface that you're connected to. For example, here I'm clicking on the host. I've got the host permissions in front of me right now. So I can do a lockdown mode or an ent uh, enter maintenance mode. I can go to services, which are actually there for the host and make the changes right there. Now, if I go to manage under the host settings, I get uh, the other options. For example, the advanced settings, the auto start option, the swap and the time and date. So these are the advanced option which you see on the vSphere uh, fat client itself. So here I can actually search for any options which I uh, need. For example, if I want to search for copy and write options, in that case I can get that. Uh, I don't need to actually hit enter. So if I just type in, uh, for example, if I type in net for network options, So if I type in network here and just wait a minute and the not network options actually come up. So this is a pretty cool feature. And the auto start again, we have options of uh, setting up the auto start options for the VM. Let's go to hardware. Now the hardware gives you options of uh, enabling or disabling password devices. Power options gives you options of changing performance uh, performance policies. Licensing gives you the various licensing features which are there and the packages you can see all the packages which are installed. So this is something which is not available in the uh, FAT client, but it is available in the uh, HTML client. So if you want to install an update, now you can just click on install an update and give it the path uh, or, or the repository and you can download it from there. Now coming back to services here, you can see which all services are enabled or disabled. Now on the right hand side, you see the firewall rules and you have hyperlinks there. So you can click your way through to the various other settings as well. Security and users, you have acceptance levels, you have authentication. Again, you can join this particular host to a domain, etc., which we'll be doing later on. You have options of changing certificates. It gives you user and uh, user uh, options and roles. So you can add users and roles here. And then you also have options for a lockdown mode. Now, uh, lockdown mode, um, if I do an edit settings here, I have option three options actually. One is disabled, one is strict lockdown mode, and one is a normal lockdown mode. So the difference is if I am doing a strict lockdown mode, it doesn't allow you access to DCUI. And uh, if I do the other option, then I basically can update. I mean, log into the DCUI. Now, if I click on the help options, I have tools and links, wherein I have options to manage object browser, SDK documentation, remote command line tool, VMware remote console, etc. 
If I click on any any of the hyperlinks there, it takes me to the uh, documentation page uh, for that particular feature set. Now clicking back on the host, let's try and create a particular virtual machine and see how that goes. So I've clicked on create a new virtual machine, click on next. So select a name and a guest OS. So this time let me just go ahead with uh, name I'll be giving just a default name test or something. And um, under the guest OS, let's just choose the option for uh, the VMware Photon OS. So there'll be Linux. And here let me just scroll all the way down and choose the option of Photon OS. Click on next. So data store, by default, I have just one data store, which is fine, just click next. And I have an option of customize settings. Okay, so here I can choose any any other option I need. For example, multi-CPU, or if I want to increase or decrease the memory, etc. CPU, hot plug, etc. So those are the options I have here. If I go to VM options, in that case, those are the options for uh, the advanced option for this particular virtual machine. So if I click on uh, Remote Console option or VMA Tools, etc., you can see that I have the other options um, right there. So I'm just clicking my way uh, through this list here. Okay, so click on next and uh, these are my default option in case I want to change anything I can go back and if everything looks good I'll just click on finish here. So that will actually go ahead and create a particular virtual machine for me. So let me just click on virtual machine. It shows one now so the virtual machine should be there. There you go. So I right click, I have options for the particular virtual machine here. I, hope I have options of power on, guest OS options, snapshot, console, auto start, export, edit settings, permission, etc. So let's try to power on the VM. Of course, there's no operating system. It's just a blank OS, but then uh, we'll just try to uh, power on the virtual machine and then perhaps just try and log into the console. Okay, the VM is powered on. Now there are options here uh, which you can try out. I'm just doing a normal uh, console uh, on a new window here. And uh, you can see that it's trying to do a pixie, uh, pixie boot because the operating system is not found. Of course there's no OS because we haven't installed anything. But then on top you now have um, under actions you now have uh, various options for the virtual machine that you can choose. So I'll go ahead and uh, just do a power off here. Okay. Yes. Okay, all right. So that's a brief overview of the HTML client for, uh, for vSphere 6.5. So stay tuned for further videos and we'll be delving a bit more into the, uh, into the other options which we have.